The Apple Vision Pro is the cool new tech on the block, and I've heard others say that this will probably replace the iPad for them. And when using the Vision Pro, you can see how it's rooted from the iPad itself. So in this video, I wanted to compare the Apple Vision Pro to the iPad to see which one might make sense for you. There are a ton of differences between these two devices from app experiences to pricing, but let's go ahead and start with the form factors and features. And obviously the form factors could not be further apart. The Apple Vision Pro is a virtual and augmented reality headset that straps to your face. And the iPad is a slab of glass and aluminum that you hold in your hands. And strapping more than a pound of weight to your face is something you're going to have to get used to. And Apple has done as much as they possibly could to make the light seal fit comfortably to your face. But in my couple of weeks using the Vision Pro, it has never been so comfortable that I forget that I'm actually wearing it. The whole device is actually pretty bulky. And when you add in the straps and the face cover and the battery, it's a pretty big boy to kind of lug around with you. And if you pick up the Apple travel case, that is almost the size of a small backpack itself to take with you along with whatever else you have. An iPad, of course, is just way more slender and flat and portable than a Vision Pro. An iPad will fit in any travel bag without needing a separate case. And with the exception of the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, iPads are lighter than the Vision Pro. The Vision Pro is a futuristic looking spatial computing device with all of Apple's latest technology. It's got an R1 chip and an M2 chip for the insane amount of processing needed to manage all the cameras and tracking in your face and hands and sensors and displays. The iPad has up to an M2 chip, cameras for photo and video, a couple of sensors, and if you have an iPad Pro, you get LiDAR. The displays inside the Vision Pro are some of the most advanced displays that you can find. They are insanely pixel dense at 3,386 pixels per inch compared to 264 PPI for all current iPads. Though when considering pixels per degree and other factors, the iPad will actually have a sharper display when reading text at the same relative size as a window in Vision Pro. Reading on the iPad Pro for long stretches is just easier on my eyes than the Vision Pro is. However, the Vision Pro obviously has the ability to show stuff in stereo, meaning you get 3D video and depth to images. Honestly, this is so cool. The immersive environments really make you feel like you are somewhere else. Immersive games completely change how you engage with a game and being able to watch 3D blockbusters or videos of your kids is like no other on the Vision Pro. I mean, the iPad screen is fantastic for so many things, especially the liquid Retina XDR display on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, but you will never get the 3D experience with an iPad except for some of the augmented reality stuff on iPad Pro. For cameras, the Vision Pro has stereo cameras to be able to record spatial video and photos, which look pretty cool and great and are fun on the Vision Pro. However, as soon as you take those off and display them on anything else, you're left with a pretty bad six megapixel image. Of course, all but one of the current iPads have a pretty decent 12 megapixel camera, plus the iPad Pro has a second ultra wide lens. There are other cameras built into the Vision Pro as well for monitoring your hands and face, but there is no FaceTime camera. Instead, you have this virtual persona of you inside Vision OS for video calls instead of the traditional front-facing camera you will find on iPads. Next, I wanna talk about the input options for these devices. We all know the input options for iPad. iOS and iPadOS were built as touch-first interfaces that gives us up to 10 or more touch inputs that makes it incredibly fast to open, touch, control, swipe, game, drag, and even type on the iPad. There's nothing more intuitive than using your own fingers to manipulate something on the display. For a more old school input, you can use a mouse or trackpad along with a keyboard to do just about everything on iPad OS that doesn't require multi-touch. And for even more precision or maneuvering around the OS and handwriting or creating art, you can use something like the AX Pro 2 from today's sponsor, Penaval and EIP. The AX Pro 2 is a stylus with all the features you want for your iPad, like tilt sensing, so that you can create art with the feel of a real medium to create textures. You can easily create geometric shapes, and with palm rejection, you can be sure your art is exactly the way you intend without messing everything up. The AX Pro 2 works with all the quick features in iPad OS, like quickly taking screenshots or bringing up a quick note to jot down some thoughts. You can use the AX Pro 2 almost anywhere with the scribble feature to translate handwriting to text. The button on top of the AX Pro 2 acts as a shortcut to the home screen with a single tap. And with a double tap, it brings up the multitasking window, which is super handy. Plus, the AX Pro 2 charges wirelessly with your iPad Air, iPad Pro, and iPad Mini. Looking for an even better stylus feel on the iPad? 
The EIP Nano Paperlike is an easily attachable and reattachable matte screen protector that does a great job preventing light reflections, but also gives you a real paper-like feel for art and writing when using the AX Pro 2. If you want to get your hands on the AX Pro 2 or the Nano Paperlike, you can do that today using the links in the information below. And my thanks to Penaval and EIP for sponsoring this video. For Vision Pro, the input options are much more limited. You use your eyes to navigate around the system and pinch your fingers to act as a tap or a click. You can pinch and hold to scroll or move things around. You can double pinch to zoom in and out, and you can push windows away from you or pull them closer. You can also pair a Bluetooth keyboard and Magic Trackpad for iPad-like controls, but no precision input options are available like for a stylus or even multi-touch. As far as general viewing of apps and content with the Vision Pro, you can create that custom workspace that you've always wanted by placing apps all around you or all around your office or all around your home. You can have any amount of windows that you need for the apps that work for you and your productivity. You can even take over a Mac display to give yourself a 4K canvas any size you want. The iPad has the ability to move beyond a single app with Stage Manager for up to four apps on the screen at once, but you can also connect an external display to certain iPads and get a full second display of apps and screen real estate. You can also use your iPad side by side with your Mac using universal control so you can have iPad apps on one screen and your Mac on the other, or you can extend your Mac display using Sidecar and bring Mac windows over to your iPad. When it comes to app experiences for these two devices, I think they fall into three different categories, games, work, and entertainment. Gaming on the Vision Pro can be unlike anything you may have used before. You can be absolutely immersed into a new world and use your newly converted hands into music capture devices and synth writers. This is a game that requires you to reach out and move or dance along with the music to capture all these little orbs. It's pretty cool and very tiring. And you really need to be into techno music to enjoy it for more than a few songs and in some kind of shape. You can go a bit more mixed in reality with something like Fruit Ninja and chop away or use throwing stars to attack flying fruit. Just don't hit the little pig running around. There's also new spatial games like putting 3D puzzles together, which is interesting and can be almost relaxing. All of these types of games require physical movements beyond what you normally would need for playing a video game. They're fun and neat and novel, but they're also not something that I necessarily want to do for a long period of time. And after a while, I just wanna sit and play a normal game. And you can do that with some regular iPad games and a game controller and the Vision Pro, but you're not going to find full selection that you're going to find on iPad. With iPad, there are many more games that you can use with a controller as many game developers are not necessarily allowing their apps to run on Vision OS yet. Call of Duty Mobile is my main example because I play it a lot and it's not available for Vision OS. Plus with iPad, there are thousands and thousands of touch first games that are just not compatible with the Vision Pro's lack of multi-touch controls. There's also a lack of work or productivity apps on the Vision Pro that follows the same path as games. With the iPad, there are more than 15 years of apps developed for productivity on the App Store. There's all the usual suspects like Microsoft Office, apps for reminders and task management and creative stuff like Adobe Photoshop, apps for enterprise like Citrix and remote desktop, point of sale certificate training, mobile device management, and so, so much more. For my regular day job, I have all the apps I need to be able to log in and complete my job remotely from an iPad, real enterprise stuff. These apps just simply do not exist on the Vision Pro, yet at least except for say Microsoft Word and Excel, but it doesn't even have Outlook. And for this video creating venture of mine, there's no good way to edit video. You can get the iPad version of LumaFusion and it does work mostly, but it's a pretty frustrating experience to use your eyes and fingers to try and do small changes. It just isn't a good experience. And I'm sure that that is one reason that Final Cut and Logic are not available for the Vision Pro yet, along with the fact that there's no way to plug in anything to the Vision Pro. You can't use USB storage or any USB dongles. There's no way to transfer anything to or from the Vision Pro that isn't wireless or through iCloud. And that's a big barrier to entry for anyone who wants to be able to use large media or enterprise stuff like hardware two-factor authentication or any other hardware dongle for specialized apps. But the Vision Pro excels at entertainment and video in the way that you can totally immerse yourself into a giant theater that is all your own or on the moon without anybody's head in your way you always get the best seat in the house. The spatial audio speakers sound really good and do a great job of making it feel like you have surround sound. And if you wanna just watch a YouTube video while surfing the web, you can skip the immersion and just place it wherever. There are, however, four current downsides to watching video on the Vision Pro as I see it. The first being the lack of content. 
Many of the streaming apps that you love do not have Vision OS apps yet. No dedicated Hulu, YouTube, or Netflix app, for example. Some of these you can watch in the Safari web browser, and it works, but you can't download content for offline viewing. The second issue is that there's quite a bit of glare or lens flare when watching video on the Apple Vision Pro, especially with the dark immersive environments. It's hard for me not to be distracted by it as I move my eyes around looking at a supposedly 100 foot screen or whatever. The third thing is you actually have this thing strapped to your face, which can become less comfortable over time, making you want to take breaks or just being aware of it and taking you out of the experience. And the fourth downside to watch a video on the Vision Pro, I'll get to in a minute. With the iPad, basically all the content you want to watch is available with whatever app. You can easily hold or place your iPad on a stand and get a good media experience. We've been doing it for 15 years. The 12.9 inch iPad Pro has the added benefit of the XDR display, which makes HDR movies just pop. And it's not quite as nice as the HDR on the micro OLED displays on the Vision Pro, but it's still pretty darn nice. When it comes to battery life, the iPad destroys the Vision Pro. The iPad has consistently had about 10 hours of battery life since the original with every model, allowing you to keep working or watching movies for hours on end. I can easily get through long flights and have plenty of battery left on an iPad. With the Vision Pro, the battery lasts about one and a half to two hours, meaning for most current movies, you'll need to plug in just to finish a movie, or in my case, get through my work email on a Monday morning. And lastly, the experience of just using the Vision Pro and iPad are very different. The Vision Pro is a very isolating experience, which is the fourth downside to watching video on the Vision Pro. Only you can see the content, the games, the apps, or whatever you're using, which makes collaboration or sharing difficult. The thing about cool new technology is that you want to be able to share the experience with others because, well, it's more fun that way. But there's no way to easily do that with the Vision Pro, even if two people have one. You want to show somebody a crazy YouTube video you just watched or a funny cat meme? Well. You really can't do that. You would need to send them a link or a screenshot, I guess. With iPad, more than one person can gather around a device to share a movie. I can lean over and show my wife a funny photo, and I just don't look like I'm shut off from the world when I'm in a room with others. But sometimes you do actually just wanna shut off the world around you and watch something by yourself, and the Vision Pro is actually pretty good for that. So when you look at the pricing of iPads, which you can usually find for prices starting under $300 using the links in the description below, you may be able to get more for your money compared to the $3,500 starting price for the Vision Pro. Heck, you can buy an iPad for everyone in your family to do their own thing or play a family game with money to spare. Or maybe you just buy a bunch of iPads and put them around your house for different purposes, creating a new type of spatial computing. Yeah, that could be actually pretty cool. But what do you guys think? Is the Vision Pro the way of the future and something you can't wait to get? Or are you happier with the fully developed, shareable iPad experience? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see my thoughts on Vision OS itself, check out this video right over here. Bye, one. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.